three now.
page two. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. The Word was God. All things were made by Him. And God was made. God was made. That was made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of humanity. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world. came into his own, and his own received him not. But the law received him, he gave power to the children of God. Who were born, not of blood, nor of flesh, nor of human will, but of God. And the Lord became flesh, and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the Lord. Let the earth rejoice. 
Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about it. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of this ground. A fire goes before me and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightning light up the world. The earth sees him and is afraid. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole world. Confounded be all who worship carved images, and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. I hear and is glad, and the city of Judah rejoice, because of your judgment, O Lord. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his saints and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joyful gladness for those who are true hearted. Rejoice in the Lord of your righteous and give thanks to his holy name. The second reading is from the letter to Titus. When the goodness and loving kindness of our God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This Spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. have come to expect here at St. John's in Fallbrook that the first part of the Christmas service will be uh, conducted by very cute young children in a variety of costumes representing shepherds and angels and some years we've even had and we could have had one this year with with Malcolm five we could have had a Christ child baby but this year we just didn't have enough of the other young people. And so instead you got mature children of God reading the lessons. <laughs> I overheard a father and about his six or seven year old son talking at a meal out this week. They were sitting at a nearby table and, and as is the uh, typical standard, the young man spoke a little bit more loudly than he needed to, and, and so we heard him ask, what are we going to do on Christmas? And his dad said, well, we're going to get up and open presents and then go to church. The son said, church? <laughs> on Christmas? We're going to go to church on Christmas? That's what the day is all about, said dad, about Jesus' birth and God being with us. I know, I know, I know. But church on Christmas? That wrecks everything. <laughs> I could have sworn that we were having that discussion 40 years ago with our kids. Because they always had to go to church on Christmas. So we come here this afternoon to encounter the church that wrecks everything and the child who was born to wreck everything. Recall the scandal of both the cradle and the cross in Jesus' life. There was all kinds of controversy surrounding both of those events and most of the events in between. But also note how we try to sentimentalize Christmas. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Bethlehem is smack dab in the middle of the Middle East. It wasn't then at Jesus' birth, nor has it been in almost any time since then, a still, sweet little town. It's full of conflicts between Romans and Jews and Muslims and Jews and Christians and Jews and all kinds of conflict. Away in a manger, the cattle are lowing, the baby awakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I think Rebecca would agree with me on the Apgar scale, that'd be a sign of danger, wouldn't it? A, a zero. That child needs attention medically right away. Our expectations of the holidays. We sometimes hope and pray and, and just wish for a magical healing of broken relationships within families. We hope for another Christmas miracle. And at the same time, we 
engage in and indulge in overindulgence in gifting and spending and eating and drinking and staying up too late and not getting enough exercise, we just kind of wreck our own holidays. Actually, we come together to pay honor to the one who came to wreck all of that. This birth was the plan of a subversive God who snuck in the back door of history on a mission to wreck everything. Coming as one of us, vulnerable, poor, and powerless, he came to upend the world as humans had created it. He came to wreck our selfishness, our narcissism, in order that we might love God and others and receive love in return. He came to wreck our fear of death so that we would live more fully in life. He came to wreck our political system with its winners and losers so that all God's children could be included in the kingdom. He came to wreck our tendency toward tribalism, pitting one group against another, whether that's ethnic groups or faith traditions. You know, the most segregated place on Christmas Eve is, is in each church that's only made up of people who are kind of like the other people in that building. The Baptists do their thing, and the Presbyterians do their thing, and the Roman Catholics do their thing, and the Episcopalians try to find the middle ground of all of them. He came to wreck our economy of values, to replace things that pass away, all the things that we deem important, things, with the things that are eternal, like relationships and love of God and faith. He came not to be the kind of king that is served, but the kind of king who sacrifices and serves his subjects. May this holy child on this holy night, this one man wrecking crew, disrupt our lives this season so that he might plant the grace of God in our hearts and we may come to know fully Christ's wrecking. Stand. The prayers of the people are included in the prayer of the Eucharistic prayer, what we say at the table when we bless the wine and bread. And there's a place in there for you to add your own prayers so we do not do the regular uh, intercessory prayers this evening. We skip right to the peace, and it's a little bit of a bummer because we get to say, The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And then we don't get to shake hands with anybody except those we came in the same car with. I'm sorry. Peace, Zoomers. Let us with gladness present the offerings of our life and labor to the newborn king. Please be seated.
page 10. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks for you alone, our God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. and upon these gifts, 
sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember, Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, our bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth, especially thou, those we now name before you, either aloud or silently. Prayers for Keith. Amen. 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 For Dawn and Judy. Amen. Amen. For Natty. Amen. Amen. For those with COVID and including Sydney and Will. Amen. Amen. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. John and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All are welcome to come forward to receive communion. And the way we're doing that in COVID times is we're having people come forward as released by the ushers um, to the middle, just in front of the altar rail. They are uh, given a uh, host that has been dipped in the wine and uh, they're then asked to, uh, after ingesting it, to move to the side and go around um, and come back to the places so that we don't walk facing each other. You do not need to wear your masks when you receive communion because it would be a physical impossibility to do so. But I will wear a mask when I uh, offer it to you and I will stay masked as long as the uh, bread is uncovered and, uh, and the wine is uncovered. Um, I hope that explains it and uh, please be seated until you are released to come home. Thank you. 
Turning to page 14, let us pray. 50. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation, gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. At this time in the service, we normally give people a chance who have uh, birthdays, anniversaries, or traveling prayers to acknowledge those. And uh, uh, it seems to me that our little church is not out here tonight, which we normally put the blessing uh, things in. But come on forward, Alexander. I'll just open up my pocket and <laughs> we'll wait a moment. Okay. So I understand that you have a birthday somewhere near today. 29th. The 29th. Yeah. And this will be? 21. 21? Yeah. <laughs> that is significant. Big miles now. Yeah, what do you plan to do with your 20, 21 years? Not sure yet. Mm. Keep that a secret. Mm. Finishing school? Yeah. Sure. Okay, good. That would be great. It's good to see you home for the holidays. Yeah, it's great to be home. Uh, looks like Allison has a prayer. And yeah, but we have an anniversary. An anniversary? Mm -hmm. Today. Today. This very day, oh, the 24th. Day. Yeah. Fantastic. Best to get married on. It must be. Yeah, because it's your day. And everybody remembers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't from last year, but I'll try to do better. Well, you have your reasons. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, slippage. Um, any significance to the to the number of years this time? Eight. Eight. Okay. Well, she keeps on saying that only eight. No, well, I hope that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like we've been together forever. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. So we have a birthday and an anniversary. Anything else? It looks like this is it. Okay. We all say the birthday prayer together at the end. It's on page 830 in the prayer book. If you'd like, if you don't know it and like to say it with us, uh, I'll ask a prayer for Kevin and Allison's anniversary first. Let us pray. Gracious God, be with Kevin and Allison as they celebrate their anniversary today. Help them to be reminded of the power of your love that came into the world uh, on this night and that um, they share in their love for one another. 
help them to reach out with that love to those whom they encounter, and help them to be loved by those they encounter to uh, stretch and uh, strengthen the love in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. And raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace which passes understanding. Abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, happy anniversary. I got that pocket. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Never happens. Okay. Um, we normally go outside after this service and sing Silent Night. We all have candles. It's ever so beautiful with the, the glow of the candles softening our faces, taking away many of those wrinkles that uh, are, are part of our experience. And uh, But candles aren't going to do a bit of good before the sun goes down, and the sun has not gone down, and that's purposeful on our part. We would hope this year to be able to, um, to not have to have people go home in the dark because some of us don't drive very well after dark anymore. I am being told, though, that outside right now, right this very second, it is doing this. And I'm not sure what that means, but I think it might be indicating it's raining. So I think we will all hum silent night on our way to our cars and uh, we will hope to join again next year to, to do uh, that tradition of St. John's with or without the candles but certainly without the rain. Some of you have been saying, I've, I've been getting this vibe, some of you have been saying, but there was no plate pass tonight. <laughs> what, 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 am I the only one thinking that? Perhaps. There is a plate at the back, and if you want to make a donation, you are certainly welcome to do so, although it is not necessary so to do. We are also uh, finalizing our pledge campaign for the church for next year. We've reserved, received, so far, 25 pledges. We believe that we need to receive about 40 to 45 pledges, so we're hoping that those who have not yet pledged will pledge. Um, but the wonderful, incredible, phenomenal, miraculous news is that those 25 pledges uh, have pledged uh, over $100,000. So uh, that will keep the doors open for at least the first three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and perhaps a little longer. So, anyway, thanks for joining us for Christmas Eve. I hope that it was a meaningful service that uh, gives dimension and strength to your lives and uh, helps you to celebrate with your families and with those you love. Let's sing a closing hymn, and I'm going to propose Joy to the World.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us go forth in the name of Christ.